So, hello everybody. Good morning. Thank you for being here. My name is Lara Kürzer. I'm from the German organization Leukemia Help. I'm a myeloma patient myself <laughs> and I'm a lazy myeloma patient, so this is the perfect topic for me. So, I would like to introduce to you Gia, <laughs> Gia again, a very special guest from England. Um, she's working in the Royal Surrey Country Hospital and uh, she's a senior physiotherapist and um, her specialty is the rehabilitation of patients with complex and chronic diseases. And she's also involved in teaching and supervision of students and other physiotherapists and assistants. And um, she provides assessment to clinical diagnosis with inpatient rehabilitation and she assists with clinical specialists for the setting and monitoring of um, standards and policies of clinical practice. And she participates, and I think this is very important, in the evaluation, in evaluation projects um, to raise the awareness of current research relevant to this speciality, so she's up to date. So this, <laughs> that's, that's always important for us, for us patients. And today she will share with us her expert opinion on the rehabilitation, self-care, and quality of life in multiple myeloma. So thank you for being here. Joanne Heike. <laughs> Hi, good morning. My, um, my name is Jia Hui Gan. You can call me Jia, which is short of um, Jia Hui. And um, I'm a Chinese, so it's quite hard to pronounce it anyway. So just have a background introduction of myself. Um, I, since I graduated with a background of visual diabetes, I used to work in Singapore uh, in a public hospital where I went through all my rotation. And I... Oncology rehab is something quite niche to uh, physiotherapy field 10 years ago. Uh, I first um, developed my interest in oncology rehab and also I first exposed to multiple myeloma patient was when I was rotated to John Hawking Hospital, uh, which is an American hospital which was based in Singapore. And following that, uh, I went to uh, also Brooks University to further my study in uh, muscular skeletal rehabilitation. Um, I also did some specialized study in a uh, cancer care study to further develop my uh, interest in oncology rehab. And following that, what brought me back to UK was because I married to uh, my husband, who is an Italian. Right, uh, today uh, we, let's have an overview on what we are going to discuss for the next one hour. Uh, first of all, we're going to explore what are the challenges faced by multi, uh, myeloma survivors in their daily life and what are the barriers for them to participate in physical activity or exercise. And also, we're going to look at the, what are the facilitators to overcome this barrier to make them exercise and also to enhance their ability to participate in self-care. Um, we also have a, going to have a little bit of insight on what are the available evidence of exercise program at different phase of <laughs> disease. And also, we need to know what are the safe prescriptions to, to progress our exercise. So, uh, with a remarkable uh, advancement in uh, disease-directed therapy, life expectancy in myeloma survivors are extending. However, with the cumulative burden of the bone disease like lytic bone disease, compromised immunity and treatment-related toxicity could actually prevent the return of them to good quality of life and also the ability to self-care and self-manage. Um, it could be wider to focus on non-invasive uh, strategy to maximize their quality of life and well-being. As a plasma cell bone marrow cancer, 80% uh, or more of the uh, myeloma survivor actually <coughs> presented with bone morbidity. Uh, this actually positioned them at high risk of uh, pathological fracture, also the musculoskeletal pain, 
uh, vertebral collapse by long bone uh, fracture. This could lead to skeletal deformity, muscle wasting, deconditioning, functional decline, or even lead to disability. But on the other hand, this bone pathology and musculoskeletal uh, condition could mean that they could benefit from uh, increased their activity level. So the um, the main sign of um, multiple myeloma, including uh, uh, crab, we call it a crab, which is short of hypercalcemia, renal failure, anemia, and also bone lesion, could be the barrier to stop them to participate in uh, exercise program. And secondly, the side effect of myeloproactive therapy can be anything pain, neuropathy, fatigue, weakness, uh, and also their psychological effects such as uh, fear of infection, uh, lack of motivation, sometimes they even got into depression. And also a lot of them will tell us that I'm not sure how to exercise safely. Uh, lastly, as a multiple myeloma is highly prevalent in elderly, so age-related uh, decline in physical ability, it could be an unavoidable uh, issue, just like the issue in an uh, aging popu uh, population. So who are the people actually affected by signs and symptoms of multiple myeloma? So as a uh, accumulated uh, burden disease of side effect, a uh, survivor uh, with advancing age, high age, as well as multiple lilies, uh, multiple myeloma disease, tends to be affected the most. And this side effect might not just impact on the psychosocial well-being of a uh, myeloma survivor, but might also, a lot of time, I would say not might also, a lot of time they also impact on their uh, closest uh, environment, such as their family member as well as their friends. Um, what are the physical activity uh, guidelines for a uh, cancer survivor? <coughs> so according to American College of Sport Medicine and World Health Organization, they both suggest at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity, aerobic and strengthening uh, physical activity. Uh, at least 75 minutes of vigorous intensity, uh, similar activity for cancer survivor. And I mean physical activity. This means that then you're not necessary to go and do a lot of sports. Uh, monotonous, or we call it boring uh, exercise training. Uh, you can do anything which is enjoyable and functional to yourself, such as leisure time physical activity, uh, transportation, like walking to work, uh, cycling to work, cycling to shopping, uh, any occupational related activity, such as your work, uh, household chores. It can be very tiring as well. You need to do cleaning, uh, laundry, gardening and so on, uh, as well as you can plan for any physical activity in the context of your daily or personal family life, such as uh, take care of your children, play with your grandchildren, walk the door, or uh, joining any community uh, service activities. So um, there are actually multiple ways uh, to accumulate this 100 15 minutes of moderate intensity exercise. Um, with the concept of a uh, short bout, like five or 10 minutes of uh, moderate intensity, and gradually build it up to 150 minutes per week. So um, as a definition, what is moderate intensity exercise? So uh, if we perform an exercise test professionally, uh, on a treadmill or by a cycling task. So we are actually targeting 50 to 70% of maximum heart rate. 
Oh, according to a uh, board rated perceived exception scale, it will be uh, four to six out of 10 that you should feel uh, a bit light to somewhat hard, so it's not too difficult. Oh, in terms of vigorous intensity exercise, so we are targeting 70 to 85% of the maximum heart rate. Oh, according to the board, uh, rated perceived exertion scale, uh, you should feel 7 to 8 out of 10, which is somewhat hard to hard, but not very hard. We will define it as a very hard intensity of exercise. So how many of you make this exercise uh, activity level per week? Can you raise your hand briefly? Um, if you do a exercise lockout, count about your daily activity, your physical activity, cleaning, walking, you might achieve this level. A lot of people achieve it. So, um, how many myeloma survivors actually met the uh, physical activity guideline? So, during active treatment period, there were approximately 7% of them met the physical activity guideline, which is quite worrying. Oh, during the off treatment period, they should be more active, but there were about one fifth of them met the physical activity guideline. Uh, according to Johns et al. 2004, uh, despite of low number of uh, myeloma survivors met the physical guideline, uh, this suggests that by just engaging in moderate intensity exercise, they do present it with higher quality of life score. So, uh, in another study, later study by Craig Tenditoting, uh, there was slightly increased number, basically a few percent of increased number of myeloma survivors met the physical activity guideline. When we compare with the other cancer survivor group, there were a higher number of them, which is 30 to 45 percent of them met the uh, physical activity guideline. And, um, so, uh, this finding suggests that a uh, myeloma case uh, can be more debilitating with other types of cancer, and this could represent an additional challenge for them to participate in regular physical activity, or simply just self-care and self-efficacy uh, in their uh, activity daily living. So now, uh, we're going to look at this uh, literature review uh, done in a systematic way with the title of the Effectiveness of Exercise Program in Patients uh, with Multiple Myeloma, which was my study in 2016. So um, just a brief uh, information about methodology. <laughs> So manual search, in addition to uh, 10 electronic data uh, search will, uh, was conducted uh, with the aim to prevent uh, omission. So we, uh, we also perform manual search at local libraries, such as the library at University of Oxford and University of Oxford, uh, Oxford Brookes University. And also we went to the reference release, uh, try to identify any uh, exercise program which is specific in multiple myeloma case. Uh, on the other hand, we also perform some website search, Google Scholar search and consultation within the available clinical framework. Hopefully, we can identify uh, any article uh, which hasn't been published or is going to be published. To Following the exhaustive serve, we only managed to identify seven uh, studies. Uh, it was not too bad, I will say. And uh, from the study, from these seven studies selected, we analyzed the effectiveness of exercise program um, to 
thematic analysis, and we look into the specific elements of the exercise program and its related outcome measure in terms of physical outcome measure, physiological outcome measure, or any clinical outcome measure used by the medical uh, oncologist. Uh, exercise performance, their quality of life, psychological well-being in order to answer this re the research question. So from the, um, eventually the data uh, we obtained from uh, the data analysis. We also went to some uh, appraiser for the quality of the study selector, but we're not going to talk in detail today. Um, from the from the from this literature review, we divided the outcome into uh, three phases of exercise intervention. First of all, we're going to talk about um, the exercise intervention during an uh, active multiple myeloma treatment phase. So, uh, during uh, active myeloproactive treatment phase, we managed to identify four home-based exercise programs that will uh, individualize access home-based exercise program, which is a one-off session, and while the participant will undergoing high-dose chemotherapy or autologous stem cell transplant. So they went through stretching exercise. Um, basically, you need to warm up a little bit to get your engine warm up and get yourself ready to prevent any musculoskeletal injury. And also aerobic exercises, they suggest them to do any aerobic exercises, usually uh, they like to do walking. And uh, the, the recommended um, intensity here, it seems a bit contradicting because here saying that it's about 65 to 80 percent of the maximum heart rate, but seems like between moderate to maximum intensity. But actually, uh, the author gave them the board rated perceived exertion scale to go home and suggest them to just work at the light. Um, they got to feel between uh, light to somewhat hard, which is more direct intensity exercise. So I would say that went to moderate intensity exercise. Then they also have to go into uh, strengthening exercise. Basically, they use TeraBand to uh, progress their strengthening. And uh, you may observe that these uh, four home-based exercise basically uh, have a common author, which is uh, Coleman, Dr. Coleman, who has a nursing background. And they were done this study in uh, United States in a quite a prominent uh, cancer research center. And, but the difference of this home-based study is the duration of the program with apparently have reduced from six months to uh, 15 which which is less than four <laughs> months. And they also use the profit latte appointing alpha to uh, targeting the anemia effect, hopefully by working on the, uh, the anemia effect could suppress the confounding factor to uh, cover masking the effectiveness of home exercise program. And all these for all these studies are uh, actually randomized control trial with a uh, treatment group and control group, except the second study by Kuhn and Coleman, uh, 2004, which is a qualitative in nature. Basically, they run to focus group, focus group and thematic analysis to uh, identify uh, the outcome. Um, in the earlier study, uh, 2003, with 40% of the dropout rate, um, basically there was not much difference between treatment and control group apart from the, uh, the treatment group has in shown improved in their lean body weight. But when I look into detail, they say that uh, they're not actually increase in their uh, lean body mass weight. Basically, your, uh, th your muscle mass versus your fat uh, tissue level, but is they maintain it by the control group, which is the, uh, the group that didn't do any home-based exercise, they drop significantly 
versus the uh, home-based exercise group. And in the second study, uh, the qualitative study, uh, all the participants in the treatment group, they believe that exercise is positive and they benefited from exercise in terms of uh, improve their mood. They, some of them even reported that they have uh, reduced the use of their depress, uh, antidepressant and uh, they also improving their fatigue level, keeping their body in shape. And some of them tell us that, that if they know they can attend some benefit from exercise, they should start the exercise earlier instead of when they're invited to uh, join this uh, uh, cancer study, uh, this research study. Um, in this in 2008, for 15 weeks of uh, home-based exercise program, for participants underwent chemotherapy only, or 30 weeks for people underwent uh, stem cell transplant. Uh, it didn't show any difference of six mini walk test, which is the aerobic capacity assessment. Uh, but they had shown improving numbers of red blood cell and platelet transfusion. Uh, at times and days of stem cell collection. However, the outcomes became statistically significant versus the control group was only after they eliminated the participant who didn't respond to appointing uh, alpha uh, supplement. Um, this clearly suggests of the selection uh, bias in data analysis. So, I'm not too convinced by the outcome. Um, lastly, we say about the primary treatment in uh, myeloma patient usually is, is high dose chemotherapy, which can cause unresolved fatigue. Um, this is shown by the latest study by Coleman 2012 that there is no any improvement in any of their outcome measure for a study in less than four months. But both control and treatment groups show that they became more and more fatty, sleepless at night, and they also getting more deconditioned, and some of them became functional decline. So from these four home-based studies without regular face-to-face uh, -face contact, but one off assessment, and then go home, do your home uh, exercise program, uh, doesn't seem really work. So what we suggest in our literature um, is um, the home-based exercise program during my operative uh, phase should provide with some some level of face-to-face -face, uh, supervision and to be regularly contact. It can be an individual one-to-one -one session to assess their need, or it can be a group session if their needs is not uh, too uh, specific or have to be treated one-to-one. -one. And we should progress the exercise component. Or sometimes we have to step back a little bit when their condition is not it's not that idea, or oh, sometimes they get further functional decline during uh, the treatment phase. So uh, one of the latest uh, home exercise program, uh, 2017, last year, in prostate cancer, suggests that so efficacy uh, in participants who only participated in home-based exercise program actually became negative at treatment. Uh, at third month because of lack of face-to-face -face contact. And uh, lastly, we suggest that uh, the exercise training should be ongoing right after you complete the treatment, uh, myeloperative treatment. And this home-based exercise program uh, show that that might not be sufficient in their duration and intensity, or they might have premature complete of their exercise program while the participants still have their needs to be met. So second phase we're going to discuss will be uh, the exercise intervention during myelo uh, multiple myeloma remission phase. Uh, mix exercise training program. Uh, 
uh, apply both qualitative and quantitative data analysis, selected 37 patients out from 60 in a stable maintain maintenance phase uh, where the participant will either off treatment or they were undergoing uh, maintenance treatment to undergo this mixed exercise program. During the first treatment, they have to go to weekly uh, one uh, group session uh, led by a physiotherapist or twice of a home-based exercise. Uh, and the exercise content is quite similar to home-based exercise program, which including aerobic uh, stretching, aerobic exercises at moderate intensity, and resistant exercise, including weightlifting, terra band uh, exercises as well. And in the second uh, phase of the exercise program, between <coughs> three to six months, they have to go into home-based exercise three times a week. And they also come in to attend a group session once a week. This study actually uh, run by University College of London. And um, eventually, there were 28 out of 37, which was about 75% of the participants complete this six month of study, mainly due to logistic issue, which is the most common problem. Uh, family or work commitment, as well as uh, myeloma disease progression, they cannot tolerate this program anymore. And just for your information, uh, this majority of these uh, participants had significant lytic bone disease at their long bone, uh, spinal bone collapse, uh, underwent orthopedic surgery recently, and they also require regular energy share uh, titration, which is pancular. So uh, in this study, they analyzed both participants who uh, completed and didn't complete the exercise program. It showed that participation in this mixed exercise program had significant improve in their patient reported quality of life, uh, measured by functional assessment, cancer therapy general version, uh, as well as the fatigue score. And you can see that from uh, this one we call MI day, which means minimally important difference, uh, score also improve, uh, not all of them, majority of them also improve more than three. The other outcome measure, including upper limb and lower limb strength, had shown a significant improvement over time point. They run the test to uh, one where repeated ANOVA test. However, there were no significant changes in terms of VO2 max, which is their um, um, aerobic capacity, as well as uh, the fat-free lean body mass, uh, which is quite similar to the home exercise program. Uh, because they only compare among themselves, not compared to the control group. And this suggests that, uh, that even the maintenance treatment uh, during the off-treatment phase, multiple myeloma itself can be quite debilitating. Uh, this mixed exercise program might not be sufficient in their intensity. Lastly, we're going to talk about the quantitative analysis uh, from this mixed exercise program. So the first thing they identified was fear associated with risk of bone uh, fracture. And the power discipline uh, described that the multiple myeloma itself is very frightening. And uh, they will warn of the risk of bone fracture. So they will not sure how should they do their exercise and they become overprotective and over defensive to, to do their activity daily living or any sports exercise, which is not out of expectation. And secondly, the power discipline report that uh, by the, the major, 
that they feel that the increase in their confidence mainly improved to, through the group to uh, group contact with the healthcare professional as well as contact with the other myeloma survivor and patient advocate that actually improve their confidence in other areas of their life and that they to explore other activities outside of home. And most importantly, they feel that this exercise program gives them hope and they have changed their perception of the future. So it's quite, good. quite a positive outcome. Right. Now, let's set the uh, research study aside. Let's see in real life how much does a motivator, myeloma survivor, that do exercise. So it's a big I break down life into, into smaller segments. And right now, I'm in a really good segment. And so during this segment, I have to really take advantage of this. I've got to do what I can do. And so that's what I'm doing. Right now, I'm focused on the climb and I'm going with 15 other individuals and we're going to climb uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. My name is Bob Dickey and I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma in 2010. I actually had no idea what multiple myeloma was except um, I knew it was, it was really serious. The initial chemo really didn't do anything to my numbers. I was pretty advanced. I was able to get into the City of Hope, and that's really where things started to turn in the, in the right direction. And they saw where I was at, and they knew it was a, a time was of the essence. And uh, on July 4th of 2011, I had a stem cell transplant, and it went really well. Um, it was very difficult, um, something I hope not to ever do again, but realize it could, it could happen. The, the treatment and the difficulty of the treatment has set me up and, and given me an advantage on the training side of it because the, the, the treatment really made me focus on these small segments, just getting through, just getting through, getting to the next treatment, getting to the next day. And during the stem, stem cell transplant, it was really getting to the next 15 minutes. I did Mount Whitney, a year after my stem cell transplant. That was a great thing to do, it was very difficult. This is the next big climb. And on my training hikes, it's one more lap around the top. Let's go to the bottom and go back up again one more time. I've done it twice today, I think I can make it a third time. It's pushing yourself just a little bit harder each time. I think that's what's gonna allow me to make it to the top of Kilimanjaro is because I know I train harder than I would have if I hadn't had the experience. And I enjoy the process of, of pushing myself really hard. I think that the process is probably more important than probably even that summit day. The summit day will be the validation of everything that, that I've done, but it's the process of getting there that I think is the most important. Honestly, don't you think this man is much more active than any one of us here, whether they are healthy or not healthy? <laughs> so the last phase of exercise program we're going to talk about will be um, prehab, prehabilitation, which is a trend nowadays in preventive, uh, preventive rehabilitation. So. Um, there were two studies recruited, uh, <coughs> recruited, two case studies were recruited to look at the influence of a six month multimodal high intensity training program on a same 41 years old female subject with a former sports background. As the nature of niche field in prehab, there is actually lack of evidence to support on this topic, which is not out of expectation. Um, the value of these two case studies was it applied sensitive and uncommon clinical outcome measure in a longitudinal setting, which I would say is rather relative in common in a physiotherapy field. So, in this six-month high-intensity uh, multimodal training program, 
was aimed to develop the power, strength, endurance, speed, flexibility, agility, anything you can name about. So it's more advanced than the exercise program we have seen just now. And to develop these various physical capacity, uh, one of the distinctive uh, features of this exercise program, there was frequent chance of the exercise uh, to, in order to develop same capacity. For example, in order to develop power, uh, the, these subjects have to underwent different jump, weightlifting, resistant exercise, or as well as their combination in a functional movement setting. Following this six month uh, exercise program, these subjects had further trained without direct supervision, but annual monitoring of her outcome measure. So you can see from this uh, graph, from year 2000 to 2011, the IgG level has improved from 2.53 to 1.84, and uh, this one is bone marrow plasma cells level has in, had improved from 20% to 10%. And also the exercise performance, including half squat, 100 meter core, uh, bench, bench press, they all has improved. Uh, another thing I will talk about here, which is not in this uh, graph, will be the cardiac aut autonomic control, which were measured through the heart rate variability. It had shown significant increase uh, compared to their baseline. And this study also compared the outcome from the uh, cardiac autonomic control uh, by compared with six healthy age mate subjects. It also showed significant improvement. So this study suggests that, this case study I have to read first, uh, suggests that fitness training could be beneficial to survivorship outcome in smoldering multiple myeloma <coughs> case. However, further randomized control trial study is really required. So let's go back to uh, this literature review to see how is the effectiveness of exercise program. So we will say that majority of the studies selected presented with some positive correlation between participate in exercise program. It shows some improvement in uh, various aspects, including physiological, psychological, quality of life. Uh, however, it is very hard to suggest a single type of exercise or exercise program for all different stage of myeloma patient because there's quite lack of study recruiter and the study recruiter were quite varied in their design, the stage of multiple myeloma as well as their treatment selected. And last thing will be uh, their methodology quality was quite varied as well. But however, we will say that it is safe to exercise even in a vulnerable uh, multiple, multi uh, comorbidity case. And finally, we will suggest an individualized assessment to establish a personalized exercise program or just simply some advice tailored to each patient condition and their concurrent treatment need. Because we sometimes it's not necessary about exercise, they might have other needs, for example, to treat their neck pain, back pain, and extra. In a high comorbidity uh, cancer like multiple myeloma, we have to consider some of the safety factors when designing an exercise program or providing a physical activity advice. So in an acute anemic case, we should avoid high intensity, high speed exercises. In a severe immunocompromised case, uh, we would suggest to avoid activity that might increase the risk of infection. For a significant or sudden drop of the platelet cow, do avoid high impact or contact spots or uh, activity to prevent uncontrolled breathing. 
for severe deconditioning and affected case to try to plan something which is meaningful to them, I would just advise them to participate in a light to moderate intensity exercise. Finally, uh, if a uh, if a person reports to you that they're presented with uh, some of the side effects from uh, the treatment, do you allow them to take brandy or rest in between of the day, in between of the exercises, encourage them to maintain their hydration level, encourage them to drink, and do not participate in vigorous exercise. In enhancing physical activity level, behavioral change intervention to promote positive effect of exercise should be provided. Firstly, we talk about environment cue. Environment cue can be anything uh, from regular symptom monitoring, cell management coaching, decision support in their daily life, and this is not necessary to be provided by healthcare professional, but it can be anyone like friend, family, uh, fellow myeloma patient support, patient advocate, especially uh, support from the com community service. Goal setting. Goal setting in terms of a uh, long-term goal, as simply as uh, walking your dog for half an hour, going out for hiking, going out for shopping, do your grocery, going out for a family trip, or even going back, return to work to gradually build on the short-term goal in terms of physical activity level or a true personal review of exercise performance, it can be facilitated to using various goal-setting tools such as a smart goal to or goal attainment, uh, attainment, attainment scale. So in 21st century, how can we miss out uh, the technology? So what we are talking here is we may use mobile technology, such as just use your smartphone or gamification, uh, including virtual reality game. And this lady who is very active there is actually playing a Kinect to Xbox. Uh, use we in a clinical setting, actually all this is applying in the uh, NHS healthcare system, and it's very common in Singapore and Hong Kong. And this uh, technology support could be a promising tool for scalable support of therapeutic activities and continuity of patient care outside of healthcare setting in the community or at home. So lastly, we're talking about cell monitoring or physical activity. We can use pedometer or accelerometer by mobile technology, or just simply use the exercise logbook like uh, Christina used in her study. Um, so this cell monitoring strategy allow the my myeloma survivors select their daily training volume based on their physical readiness as well as their fatigue level to enhance the effectiveness to provide regular monitoring uh, by family, friend, healthcare professional, and patient advocate. Following multi aspect of support, myeloma survivors should be motivated with the drive of um, for, from the drive of positive benefit of physical activity through habit formation in order to be self-efficacy and to be able to self-care. Future direction. Uh, I would suggest a multidisciplinary uh, prehab service uh, should be established by uh, physio, OT, nurse, doctor, patient advocate, uh, anyone, even psychology, in addressing both uh, physical activity and psychosocial component um, to prevent development of multiple myeloma, or just simply uh, prepare them to go into chemotherapy or stem cell transplant, which is actually, this program is available in uh, my current hospital, Rosary County Hospital, and some of the hospitals in London. 
and we will really require more evidence from a methodology vigorous study at different phase of multiple myeloma uh, in to guide a cost-effective exercise program. And lastly, we suggest try to maximize the use of technology uh, to support long-term uh, treatment. My take home message would be an explicit recommendation was try to avoid inactivity and be physically active, uh, as active as possible. Um, I mean that try to do something which is enjoyable and meaningful to yourself and also it can be meaningful to your family member or at your work. And try to get support from anyone, including MPA, to maintain your self-efficacy. And we are very helpful anyway. So, and thank you. Oh, okay. So, thank you very much. Very nice session. Very much information. I think it's very important. We, yes, we are a little bit late, but I think we should take the chance and ask some questions because I think this is a really good chance to to ask her. She's a very professional physiotherapist. So, who has some questions? <coughs> yeah. Uh, so you you want to ask for the PowerPoint? Yeah, sure, no problem. Mm. Okay. So maybe, I w does somebody have a question or I shall ask one? So, may I? Ah, sorry. <laughs> I would like to ask if there are any specific uh, exercises that are not good for myeloma patients that they should like not do. Um, so we went through some part of it, like the precaution of exercise. So we would talk about, we talk about like when their blood level is altered, when their sight and symptom are acutely not well. So we would suggest not to do particular exercise, have to be specific to their personal need. Because we know that from this study to the focus group, a lot of them quite frightened to move. So um, try not to give too much information to them, but specific, ask, about, ask them some question, what is their current condition, what is their medical condition, what is their blood test, their x-ray, their CT scan, in order to give them advice. But uh, what I can say to you is, um, what exercise to, in, instead of tell them what not to do, but suggest them what to do. So we want a bottom-up strategy, encourage them to move. So um, at this point, I would say some of the exercise which is very good for them are stretching. You know, a lot of them have a bone lesion uh, problem. So they tend to present uh, with some outer posture, like quite kyphotic, quite slouch, and quite tight uh, at particular part of their body, such as their chest their low back, so you know their biomechanics are not very good. So we encourage them to do a corrective stretching. So the corrective stretching, because they get tired quite quickly, we suggest you uh, to be seen by a physiotherapist or even a osteopath, kinesiologist, uh, to get some idea about what kind of uh, corrective exercise to do. Because I would say they are battery level, the energy level is quite limited. So maximize to use what they have to do the important targeted individualized exercise. So are there some questions? So I would ask one question. So, like, um, so I think one main problem is the lack of motivation. We got to charge your visual fee. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, so would you share some experience from your daily life in the clinic? What do you do when you have a patient with, who is maybe has some fatigue, who is depressed, who does not want to move at all, who yeah, right. feels um, unsure? I see depressed and people who do not want to do any exercise every day. I would say half of them do not want to get up from bed to do anything. Uh, 
in an acute setting because they do not understand what are the benefits of the exercise. So we work as a multidisciplinary team, but uh, advice from a physiotherapist itself is not sufficient. We need the doctor, we need the nurse, we need anyone, even the catering staff, to tell our patient it's important you need to get up to move. And um, we tend to make something more functional. People do not like to deprive from their ability to use toilet. So we tend to set some simple goal like get out to the bed, try to sit on the chair, and slowly we need to set the goal for how many meters is your toilet away from your chair. So we uh, give them like short-term goal and your long-term goal. Short-term goal, we aim that you can go to use toilet. Long-term goal is you able to go home. Let's say walk to your kitchen, make yourself a cup of tea, and you manage to use the stair, do the stairs safely, go up and down, gain back your uh, independence in your daily life. But for this is quite a deconditioning, uh, deconditioned case for a younger adult who need to go back to work. So we will do something uh, slightly more advanced, let's say like test their, what are their uh, musculoskeletal impairments. Sometimes some of them do have some neurological impairment uh, caused by the cord compression, um, vertebral compression, neuropathy. So we need to give them something more uh, tailored advice. But this is quite expensive, and our waiting list in the uh, national healthcare system to see a visual actually is quite high, uh, quite long if you're out of um, uh, acute setting. So uh, that's why we want them to come back to the uh, group exercise. So we are uh, designing some of the group exercise, but unfortunately, because of the funding issue, we have to take all sorts of patients, but we try to get everyone in hematology or people similar to uh, uh, multiple sclerosis, we categorize them together and do the group exercise together. Thank you. Welcome. So, are there any more questions? If not, um Thank you very much for this really nice Thank you. session. Thank you. So, <laughs> and I think now we have the lunch break. <laughs> <laughs>